Hey everyone, Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist. Uh, in this video, I wanna talk about uh, what you should do when you feel pain. Meaning, if you have some ache or pain, whether it be your knee, your butt, your leg, your back, those are my specialties, the back, the butt, the leg, the piriformis, whatever, okay? Nobody really knows, all right? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but what should you do? So what's the framework through which you should decide where to go, uh, what to get, an MRI or an x-ray or who to see, a chiropractor, the PT, the acupuncturist, etc. It can be confusing because, you know, let's just be honest. Everywhere you look, everyone has an opinion, me being one of them, right? So it's like, who do you trust? So, uh, you know, don't talk to friends or family members. Uh, I guess you can if you want, but you're going to get what worked for them. And, you know, they're going to come, again, from a very biased standpoint. So, Anyways, so uh, just get that everyone's wearing their own goggles, so they're going to see things in a certain way. So, right, you go to the chiropractor, you're, you know, just wild guess here, you're probably going to get some type of adjustment or something like that. Uh, massage therapist, don't be surprised if you have knots when you walk out of there, you learned you have all these issues wrong with you, and uh, you get a massage. So, again, for another video, but that being said, it can be confusing. Who are you supposed to trust? Who are you supposed to believe? Hopefully, you can trust me. That being said, look, uh, first thing that happens when you have something, let's just say you bend, some, bend over, you pick something up, and you get a jolting pain down your leg, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Your brain and everybody's brain in this world wants to go, uh, what's going on, right? WTH. And while that's completely normal, and I would kind of do the same, just realize that that's sort of a rabbit hole because that question of what's going on leads you down a search uh, seek and find, if you will, or lead you down uh, or on a hunt for what's going on. So uh, in the world, what things tell us what's going on with our body? Well, usually it's some type of x-ray or MRI or, you know, specialist or something like that, who then usually tells you you need an x-ray or MRI. So that's like the gold standard, like, oh, right? That's the gold standard of diagnostics is that you need an x-ray or MRI. Oh. But at the end of the day, right, that can be sort of troublesome. Now, here's why. So here's sort of the framework. So if you go down the idea of what's going on, you're going to go see a specialist. Very predictable path. I'm just letting you know. You're going to go to your family doctor. The family doctor is going to say, hey, you know, rest, take some pills. If you're lucky, maybe go see a physical therapist. Um, but usually that's only like three or sorry, 7% of people uh, who have back pain get recommended to go see a physical therapist. So if you're like 93% of the people out there who say hurt your back, you're going to be told to rest, take pills or, you know, get an injection or go see another specialist. So they're going to pass you off to see an orthopedic specialist because they know everything, right? And they're going to, because they don't know everything, try to uh, pass the buck and put uh, their diagnostic ability in the hands of an x-ray or MRI, right, which is going to show all kinds of crap, which may or may not be the problem because we know that there is almost little to, there is little to no correlation between what is found on an x-ray and MRI and what you actually feel. And the issue is that you've, if you go to see an orthopedic specialist, uh, they generally don't do a very thorough clinical exam. Some do, some don't. I've worked with both on the end of the spectrum, but that is really what trumps all is your story your history, where you want to go, what makes it better, what makes it worse, and the motions that make it better, make it worse, which is basically your clinical examination. And then maybe an MRI, okay? But looking at an MRI first and then just saying, oh, this is what you've got without actually going through it, it's just a bunch of junk. So that being said, you're going to go down the path. You're going to be told that uh, you have this problem with you. Let's just say if it's a back or butt problem, a herniated disc, piriformis syndrome, sciatica, uh, spinal stenosis. Maybe they don't even know. So then where are you left then? Uh, same place you started, not really knowing what's going on. But then even if you are told what's going on, so let's just slap a label on you. Let's just say you have a, a disc problem. So then you're sitting there, you're driving home, right? Or you, you, you're thinking about it, you're Googling. Uh, maybe you just ask them because they're going to give you a recommendation. Maybe good or maybe bad or whatever. But then your next question goes, if I could pop a bubble out of this, right? It goes, okay, so how do we fix it? Meaning, what do we do to try to solve this problem? And the answer is, we still have to figure that out. 
So having a diagnosis doesn't lead to uh, some meaningful change in the treatment in the majority of cases. Now, that being said, again, I can create another video on this, but there are like four times when I'd say, hey, you might want to see somebody for this problem, all right? And that would be if we think that you have cancer. So if you've had a previous history of cancer and this you know, kind of remind you of maybe some aches or pains you had when you had cancer, or it just hurts all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do. You're, you're losing weight. Uh, you're getting much older. Your family has all this history of cancer. Uh, you can't sleep because the pain is fine during the day, but just unrelenting at night. Then yeah, you're probably going to want to get that checked out. X-ray MRI. Cool. If you like jumped off a two-story building and then landed on your butt and you you had severe back pain, then eh, you might want to check that out. Because why? We're trying to screen for big things: cancer, fracture, infection. Look, if you just got like some virus or cold or something like that, and you're like having chills everywhere and your back's killing you then you might want to get that checked out. All right, seems like maybe something else is going on. Cancer, fracture, infre infection. Um, oh, nerve damage. Now look, everyone with butt pain and, and uh, you know jolting pain down the legs thinks they have nerve damage. <clears throat> the chance you actually have like true sciatica, which doesn't mean you have nerve damage, but true nerve damage is like very, very rare. By the way, like these things happen in only like 1% of people. So there's a 99% chance that you don't have this. So therefore, I could be wrong, but probably 99% of people who get an x-ray MRI don't actually need it. It doesn't lead to anything. That being said, you're gonna want it if you think you have any of these things, okay? Cancer, fracture, infection, nerve damage. Nerve damage does not mean leg pain. That just means you have sciatic and you have a nerve that's pissed off, all right? What it does mean is that, you know, when you try to walk on your tippy toes, or when you try to walk on your heels, or when you try to just, you know, get out of the chair with the one leg versus the other leg, you can't do it. You have really, you know, the nerve is being pinched off. You have excessive weakness. It's very obvious. And it's getting worse. If it's getting better, leave it. If it's getting worse, ooh, that's not good. All right, or, you know, the outer part of the wire, the nerves, is the sensory part. So your ability to feel. So if you're poking yourself, sitting there and saying, hey, I wonder if I have nerve damage, and, uh, you know, you're, you put your your leg and you, you tap it, tap it, poke it with a pitchfork or a needle or, or you sit it on a hot stove and you don't feel it, all right, that's a problem. That means that you're not getting signals down the nerve that are allowing you to feel like things that need to be felt, all right? So that means you're actually having nerve damage. But just pain is not a reason necessarily to have, uh, you know, to go down this diagnostic route. So that being said, that was a little bit of an offshoot. But um, if you go down for 99% of people, if your problem, and this should have been the first thing I said, if your problem is can be reproduced or made worse clearly with motion, an activity, a position, then it can almost always be reduced or alleviated by some motion, activity, or position. So, right, we're, we're for 99% of the people, if this is now a pie, all right, 1% are gonna have something big, ugly, and scary. The other 99% of people are going to have something we call mechanical pain. Or there's some movement, in really simple terms, that brings on your pain. So it's a mechanical problem. It's like, you know, you push on the brakes and they squeak, and then when you stop, they, they stop, okay? They don't squeak anymore. So that being said, right, if your problem is brought on by motion, you go down this idea of what's going on, which is very normal, we've been led to believe that that's the answer. Uh, you know, unless you have any of these things and you're 99% of those folks, uh, you're, you are normal, okay? Uh, if you're told that you have a disc problem, a piriformis syndrome, sciatica, whatever, then your brain should automatically, for a second, for a second, you'll think, oh gosh, it feels so good to just kind of know what's going on. And I get it. We all want to know what's going on. But just realize in most cases, we won't or we can't. And that's actually like, that's kind of bad news, it seems like to some people. But it's kind of good news because it's kind of freeing because you don't have to worry always like what it is as long as you know it's not this. So MRIs are good to tell you what it, something is not. They're not good to tell you what something is unless it's one of these things. Okay, so I want to know what something is not. I want to make sure it's not one of these things if we're going to do it. But again, 99% of people, if you have a disc problem, spinal stenosis, hip problem, whatever, that's not going to lead to a change in treatment in the majority 
of cases because then it puts you over here and it says, okay, uh, so, so what? Hey, doctor, uh, so you told me I have this problem and it looks pretty bad, right? Uh, what do we do about it? And then you're back to square one because you're still in pain this whole time. By the way, you wasted all this time, energy, and money trying to figure it out. And again, it's not your fault. That's just what we're told to do. So now we need to shift to, instead of like, what's this problem? We need to shift to solution. This whole time that you were going down this rabbit hole, you could have been testing motions. If your problem is brought on by motion and position, you could have been testing motions and activities and things like that, that, uh, you know, to see what can potentially make me feel better or make me feel worse. So many people think they need to go somewhere all the time to, you know, have something worked out or cracked or moved back in place when it's really just like a racket, most of it. And you could actually figure it out if you're willing to put the time and effort into it. If you're always relying on someone else to do your math homework for you, you're going to fail the math test. How do, what do I mean by that? If you're always relying on come, going to see someone who's not empowering you with tools, knowledge, and understanding to do things on your own, then they are doing all the math. Do, 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 do. They are doing all the calculations when you come in and you're just sitting there and have no idea what to do. And you just do like a robot what they tell you to do. Instead, you need to actively be involved in the process so you can actually figure out, you know, how to fix it. So that being said, when you get to that point, here's where the framework shifts a little bit. Kind of like I just said, you have to ask yourself, do I want pills, injections, or surgery? First off, do you want those things? If you do, then go to see an orthopedic or a family doc. But if you've already made up your mind, and you're probably watching this because you've made up your mind, you don't want those things, right? Then you are over here, which is great at this point. But then you need to say, do I want to rely on someone else? To fix me? Or do I want to rely on myself? Do I want to learn to fix myself? So get, just get that if movement is the solution to a problem that hurts with motion, so, so many people over here, what's going on? Diagnostic route. It hurts when I move. Well, let's just like stick you like this and lay you down on an MRI machine when you don't feel any pain. And then let's use that to explain why you hurt when you move. It doesn't make any sense. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't rewind that. All right. But if it hurts with motion, we need to look at motion. And then we need to potentially treat it with motion. Ding, ding, ding. All right. And you can either move yourself internally generated, right? You can do this stuff and you can move and you can make it worse. So you can make it better. Or you can go somewhere and have somebody move you. So you can go somewhere and have somebody dig their elbow, right? Kind of move the skin, if you will, in a certain way or the tissue in a certain way into your butt cheek or your leg or whatever, or you could just like flip yourself over and sit on a tennis ball or the cross ball or whatever it is. I'm not saying it's good or bad. All I'm saying is that one is empowering and the other one is kind of, I mean, it's cool and it's fancy and it costs a lot of money, but it's not that empowering. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want to have somebody else move you or do you want to move yourself? Do you want to fix in this case, do I want to fix myself? And look, if you want someone else to fix you, then please, by all means, find your favorite chiropractor, uh, find your favorite, you know, PT in the area, find your uh, massage therapist, acupuncture, somebody who's doing stuff to you. And again, I'm not saying it's good or bad. You just have to decide what do you want? And through this process of, you know, does it hurt with motion? Okay. Do I want to fix myself? Yes or no? Do I want somebody else to fix me? Yes or no? Do I want pills, injections, or surgery? That tells you what to do. So many people at the end of the day, they say, there's just so many options. Well, yeah, there are, but not really. I mean, cause you know, if you want pills, injections or surgery, go see pain management, the family doc and or your orthopedic doc. And if you really need to know what's going on, by the way, you're not actually going to know what's going on in most cases. Cause they're going to take an image and they're just going to tell you something that may or may not be the problem. Okay. But if it makes you feel better and you want that, go that route. See one of those people. Like if you had a stack of index cards and this was like a game, you could say, yeah, I'm out. I don't want those. Then you've got left all the natural treatments, chiropractic, massage, whatever, whatever. Okay. And you then need to ask yourself, if I want someone else to fix me, then, you know, maybe Charlie's off the table because he teaches me to fix myself. 
but I could go to the chiro, I could go to the massage therapist, whatever. And you could select one of those. But look, at the end of the day, this is the most empowering place to be. Because as much as we think that when we go to someone, they're doing something that we can't do, or they're putting you back into alignment or whatever, what are the chances of that stuff actually holding if you don't know how to kind of replicate that on your own? This is why, you know, your adjustments aren't holding or things like that. Because you're going back into a yucky environment that nobody ever told you how to clean up such that you go do the thing, you drive back into your life, and then you fail the test because someone was do, 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 doing everything for you. So look, I know it's like, it, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes time and it takes commitment to solving a pain puzzle, all right? You've got to be like a sniper, and really at the end of the day, you can't pass the buck and expect anybody else to solve the problem for you. With you, yes, but for you, no. Now, that being said, um, you know, you're going to want to, uh, ideally at the end of the day, hopefully you want to fix yourself, at which case you need a coach, you need a teacher, you need somebody who can educate you and give you tools, knowledge, and understanding about how to fix your own problem. Because look, all these motions that seem real fancy, most of them can be replicated at home. So if somebody's twisting you up in a pretzel, I mean, go look at any like yoga video. You can twist your own self in a pretzel, all right? Uh, you know, or get somebody to help you do that. You know, a lot of times you go to these classes and people can push you. You can go to these ass assisted stretch uh, labs or uh, whatever nowadays, and people can help you stretch. So there's nothing fancy about it, and I don't even think these people have any degrees, all right? So it can be done, all right? Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, do you want to learn to rely on that person or do you want to be able to replicate those motions? And that's what I'm thinking when I work with all my patients. Hey, if we do this cool motion, by the way, I was trained by osteopaths. I used to do a lot of hands-on techniques, right? But then what I realized is that they weren't very empowering for my patients. So how can I take those same motions, those same funky twists and things like that that I do and how can I give them my patients, all right? So at the end of the day, this is what you want to be thinking about. Maybe I'll put a link below sort of a little, uh, you know, it, it's, it's way quicker than listening to this whole video. Sorry, I should have told you that in the beginning. Uh, but, you know, it kind of lays out the framework because what you'll realize is that when you go down this route, it automatically throws you to this route. The question that people are asking is what's going on when really, probably really what you want to know or they want to know, whoever it is, maybe watching this video is in pain and based on my experience wants to know is what should I do about it? I don't really care what's going on at the end of the day. Actually, Charlie, I don't really care. I just thought that that would help me go down a certain treatment path. And I found that didn't work. So what do we do about it? And that's where we need to start testing. That's where you need to decide, do you want to rely on someone else or do you want to learn to fix yourself? So hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, if you're confused about what to do when you are in pain, uh, you know, kind of thinking through like who you should see and maybe how you should think about it and kind of perceive it. And uh, hopefully it can save you some time, energy, and money going down that diagnostic rabbit hole. I'm not saying that it's not kind of cool or wouldn't be great if we could figure it out. And theoretically, that makes sense that logically, oh, if I know if I have this, and that means we do this. Look, humans aren't cars. It's not that straightforward. You can't plug something in and it tells you exactly what's wrong. We think we can. We think we can send people through like a scanner and it tells us what's wrong. That's not true. Because there are a lot of people who have all kinds of stuff wrong with them and they feel no problem. And then there are people who have like nothing wrong with them on an image and feel every type of problem and pain. So it's just not an accurate way to diagnose what's going on. So we need to forget about so much the diagnosis from a medical perspective and we need to shift to a movement-based diagnosis. What things make me better? What things make me worse? Then we need to figure out, hey, do you want to rely on someone else to kind of always put you back in place or do you want to learn all the tools, tips, and strategies to fix yourself?